Hello everyone and welcome back to Kobean History. In today's video we will be having a look at the Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome. This is a pretty famous landmark in Rome and it used to be a papal fortress and after that it became a papal castle. But before it was any of that, it used to be the tomb of the Roman Emperor Hadrian. It was also called Hadrian's Mall back then or Hadrian's Mausoleum. Here you can see a reconstruction of it. It had statues all around the top and it even had an artificial garden on top with planted trees. It was constructed between 134 and 139 AD and this is where Hadrian's ashes were kept as well as some of his family and future emperors as well up until Emperor Caracalla. Hadrian also built this bridge that we are on right now that crosses the Tiber River and it faces directly onto where his mausoleum was and now where the castle is. The statues we see now were later additions commissioned by the Pope to replace the older pagan statues that were there. Much of the tomb's contents and decorations have been lost since the building's conversion to a military fortress in 401. During the sacking of Rome in 410, urns and ashes were also scattered and the building was looted as well. And allegedly during the besiege of Rome in 537, the bronze and stone statues of the original mausoleum were thrown down onto the attacking force. Legend has it that during the plague of 590, the archangel Michael appeared on top of the fortress, sheathing his sword as a sign of the end of the plague. And this is thought to be where the castle got its name from. There are also some other legends regarding how it got its name but I won't go into that in this video. In 1536 a marble statue was created of Saint Michael holding a sword after that legend I talked about and it was placed on top of the structure. This marble statue was later replaced by a bronze statue of the same subject which was built in 1753 and you can still see it on top of the castle today. So that was kind of it for the general information. Now we're going to take uh, a kind of tour and it will switch between the audio of uh, me talking over the footage like I am now. And there will also be some audio from the footage itself from when we were there in Rome, which is about uh, 10 months ago now. Hello. Hello. You look like an old person in this picture. <laughs> My camera's shy. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I'm a tourist. The glasses falling down. Like. <laughs> so here uh, we can actually see where it was the original mausoleum, the darker stone, and where the new accommodations were built on top and the new fortifications. They also added the outer wall and here you can see some features of the coastal walls. If you remember that video from, uh, was it last week or the week before? But there you had the machicolation, had, had the crenellations over here. And um, you also saw some arrow slits in there. There you actually have a statue. Uh, Caesar, Imp Caesaria. Can you read it from there? Yeah, with my camera. I don't have really good eyesight, but it says this oh. Imp Caesario Hadrianu. Oh, there, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I got it. So it's a statue of Hadrian. Because that zoom though, that zoom is thick, but with two C's, thick as a ball of oatmeal. We are on a little turret. I think it's that one. Or, oh no, that one. That's where the catapult was. Oh, you can see the Vatican from here. And the oh, people yeah. were like, I can see my house from here. <laughs> Are we allowed to go up the little steps? No, that's where there's a rope barring it off. Oh, I didn't see it. Might be time to up that prescription of <laughs> I was also a little sick during my trip. You might hear it in my voice. Uh, but there was this thing, which I wasn't really sure what, what it was used for. I don't know what this is. It's probably either going to be where like there might be kitchens or maybe to put things on here to heat them up like say fire hot arrows maybe? Maybe. Well at least then if someone fires a hot metal arrow at you it will cut you and then it will uh, 
or something cauterize the it. wound so it's really considerate Yeah, so we're not really sure what it is used for. So if you know, let uh, let us know in the comments below. Well, it goes. How deep does it go? How deep? How deep is she? I can't really see. I think it's pretty deep, but I can't really see it. Here you have a better view of uh, well how tall the original mausoleum actually was. Uh, you can see it where that uh, rough, dark stone ends. But yeah, we're on the wall at the moment, kind of walking around it. Uh, this was a dry moat. As you can see, it's quite wide. And uh, here in one of the wall towers, you actually have uh, some, some cannons on display as well. I believe they're cannons, quite long, long ones. We've made it uh, to the front now of the castle wall. Can see the bridge and yeah as my past self said uh, you get a nice view of the bridge there and the river these are quite nice gardens like little or i think they're a garden they look nice yeah here you see the arrow holes that i kind of talked about earlier it's all a good defense. You can uh, see right on the road there, and yeah, some people decided to throw a water bottle in there. This one is more clear, but uh, that one you see in that little garden. Here, machicolations again. Now we're actually inside the central structure of the castle. This hallway was uh, one of the original hallways from the mausoleum. Oh, is this a trapdoor? And yeah, that is a trapdoor. So that was one of the defenses uh, added with, uh, with the castle. Uh, this was the main area to get to the top of it where the residents were. So they were protected and uh, there was a trapdoor there that they could activate when uh, people were storming the castle. As I said earlier, this hallway was part of the mausoleum. So it was originally built by the Romans. We're in the center. So it used to be covered in marble and all painted and decorated, but I mean, it Hadrian was a pretty long time ago, so. <laughs> so the marble, these indents here where there used to be hooks that would keep the marble. Oh, hooks. Because like, it would go in the wall and then the marble would sit on it, kind of thing. Oh. So here we are actually entering the center room of what used to be the mausoleum. So this was the room where we think the ashes were kept. So from Hadrian, his family, and uh, then also the emperors past Hadrian up until Emperor Caracalla. So now we are on what uh, would have been the top of the mausoleum, but now it's a courtyard as you can see. That statue that you just saw was actually the original statue that used to be on the very top of the castle before it was replaced by the bronze one. So here they have uh, a sort of window light shaft to let light into that central chamber. So here we have a nice view from the new fortifications that were built on top of the mausoleum. They also had this nice display of uh, pretty unusual weapons. So we got a crossbow, we got a tiny crossbow with like a little dagger attached to it. And uh, it's kind of a crossbow sword, yeah. And uh, we got a miniature crossbow as well. Yeah, these are, these were quite interesting. We also see some armor displayed here a dagger that like splits into three I mean like they're pretty cool but I don't think they'll be very practical uh, but yeah there you have another view of that catapult we kind of saw in the beginning uh, some tiny cannons as well here they also have some more rooms displaying some more armor and uh, some other artifacts from the castle they also have the chapel over here that was built It's not accessible at the moment. Here you have the uniform of uh, the Swiss guard, if I remember correctly. Got the long pole there. 
So now we've gone up a little further and we've reached the Papal Apartments. And these papal apartments are actually what made the castle a castle instead of a fortress. That's a nice scene. Because as you might know, for it to be a castle, it has to be a place of residence as well as fortification. As you can see, it is quite elaborately uh, decorated. This is only the, the entrance hall. I'm guessing this was the lobby. This little room over here is the treasure room. So this is where they would have kept all their treasure. It is quite high up. It's um, in the, well, or basically near the papal apartments as well. You have uh, this narrow staircase going even further up to the top. So we will have a look what, uh, what we can see over there. View of the Vatican there. Yeah, it's quite narrow. They had this uh, one-way system, this one-way tour kind of thing that uh, made you go in one way, luckily, so we didn't have any people coming down the stairs. There's a support. There are more rooms, probably just uh, for relaxing. That was the room we were in earlier. They've got a nice... Uh, nice um, mural as well on the roof here because the, the, this kind of re resembles an, an indoor garden i guess but the, they have all the windows uh, on all the sides as well in this room specifically so we, you would have a, a nice breeze coming through the windows from the one side to the other side nice views as well this is the Passato di Borgo and it is an elevated walkway that connects the Vatican to the castle that we are in right now. It was built in 1277 and is approximately 800 meters long. It was a quick and safe route for the popes to get to the fortress from the Vatican when a threat or besieging army was near. So we've reached the top of the castle now and that's where I will end the video. If you're watching this as it comes out, that will mean that for the next week I'll be on holiday. But I do have my new Medieval Professions video planned for when I get back. But if you're interested in staying up to date with what I'm up to, you can start following me on Twitter. I'm gonna start using it again. So my Twitter will be linked in the description below. And on my Patreon, I might do some small vlog style videos for when I'm away on holiday. So that will be available from the $1 tier. So if you're interested, check out my Patreon as well down below.